next class. All right, so for this example, this is what we're going to use now all three steps. First thing is simplify. You see parentheses, distributed property. 3x plus 5 equals 3x plus 6, right? Then the next step, it says, is to get the variable on the same side. So I have a 3x on one side, and I have a 3x on the other side. Well, I just need to eliminate a 3x on one of the sides. So I'm going to have to subtract a 3x. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other. What I have is 5 is equal to 6. Well, does 5 equal to 6? No, and 5 is never going to equal to 6. And so what that means is when you do this and you obtain an equation that is not true, then you, what you have is no solution. All right? And what that means is, I didn't go, I didn't go over this because this is an Algebra 2 um, honors. We're not going to be kidding. But ladies and gentlemen, over here I found that value was 4. Right? How do we know if that's true? What could we do to verify our answer? We could simply go ahead and do what? You plug it back in, right? You guys remember doing that? Well, I don't want to spend time going through that. But that's still something valid that you guys should do, especially though the test. You know, make sure. We'll talk about that on higher um, other problems. We'll be doing the same kind of thing. This is just a review. So you can always check your answer. Well, if I say no solution, what I'm saying is there's not one value for x that would make this equation true. So let's say if I said, let's say x equals 0. If you plug a 0 in for x over here and a 0 for x over here, it's not going to make the equation true. If you put x is 1, x is negative 10, no matter what number you plug in for x, it's never going to make it true. That's why it's no solution. Does that make sense? So that's what I wanted you to write instead of not solvable. <laughs>